Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be ranking all of the eight movies directed by John Hughes. So I just want to clarify in this video that I'm only going to be talking about again the movies that were directed by John Hughes not solely written. So unfortunately you aren't going to see the likes of Home Alone, Some Kind of Wonderful, Pretty in Pink, the Vacation movies, they're not going to appear on this list. These are just the eight movies where John Hughes was behind the camera and directing these movies. So yeah, just so just to clarify, um, so it doesn't cause any confusion. But yeah, that being said, these these movies for me are there's half the movies on this list that I think are some of the best movies ever made. John Hughes, for me, was a director. I think he just really, really tapped into something in the 80s. I think that was very, very much his element. I thought he was a phenomenal writer. I think he just knew how to write characters as real people. He didn't really sort of put pigeonhole people into certain demographics. He just knew how to write them in an organic world, I think, and he was just absolutely phenomenal. But I think that that talent he had was best represented in the 80s so like i said there was there's four movies on this list that i'm not really a huge fan of but the other four i absolutely love and adore so that being said gonna get into the list so in eighth place we have this is your destiny to be forever caught in the crossfire between your head and your heart Do you think I'm going to be happy? I mean, honestly. You want to be a writer? You want to be a husband? Maybe it'll work out, who knows? <laughs> yeah, you'll be happy. <laughs> you just won't know it, that's all. She's Having a Baby, starring Kevin Bacon. So, this is kind of like, follows this new couple who sort of got married and obviously the, the the woman falls pregnant and it's kind of about Kevin Bacon's character adjusting to all of these changes that are going to happen in his life and this for me is definitely the weakest movie made by John Hughes. I think a lot of the dialogue, the writing is still there, it is definitely has the John Hughes tint to it but the movie itself for me is very very bang average. It just it just doesn't work, unfortunately. But again, it has those quips, it has that dialogue that John Hughes is so well known for. But again, the movie itself for me just falls flat, and it is very very disappointing. I think this was the penultimate John Hughes movie that he directed that I watched. But yeah, it comes in at eighth place for me. It's yeah, it's the worst he's directed, unfortunately. But. Some people might like this movie and that's absolutely fine, but for me there are some movies that he's made that just stand head and shoulders above this one. So that is 8th place for me, She's Having a Baby. So coming in at number 7, we have... You two donkey dicks couldn't get laid in a morgue. You're right. You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. right. Get him out of here. You're absolutely never right. Get him out of here. What? John. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> weird science so yeah a lot of people love this movie the, I think the main issue I have with it is there's things in this movie I really really like I love the the two leads in it uh, are pretty good uh, Kelly LeBrock is great as this sort of ideal female woman that they create that they just absolutely sort of idolise and lust over the bullies in this are a lot of fun i love bill paxton in this movie he is just firing at all pistons chewing the scenery up and i really like the end of this movie it gets very creative at times but having said that when you add all those things together separately i really like them but unfortunately as a film it doesn't really work for me i just can't get into it I've tried so many times to watch this movie and say I'm this is the time that I'm going to like it. I'm going to I'm going to really really be on board with it, but I just can't get over the finish line with it. 
not the film itself, I can finish the film, but I just can't get my opinion over that finish line, and that's absolutely fine. It just doesn't work as a whole for me. It's still a very, very entertaining film. Some of the music in there is a lot of fun. Some of the imagery is creative. But, yeah, and, and obviously the end of this movie as well. Vernon Wells, Michael Berryman turning up. Absolutely hilarious stuff. But, yeah, Bill Paxton, for me, steals the show in this film. But, yeah, it comes in at number seven for me. So, that's weird science. So, coming in at number six, we have... Jake is a senior, and he's beautiful and perfect. I like him a real lot, and he doesn't like me, okay? Oh. And he's got this incredible girlfriend. I'm just this ridiculous dork that's following him around like a puppy. Why do you think you're a dork? I don't think you're a dork. I don't think Mom thinks you're a dork. Mike thinks I'm a dork. Mike is a dork. Well, so am I. Well, if it's any consolation, I love you. And if this guy can't see in you all the beautiful and wonderful things that I see, then he's got the problem. I know. It just hurts. That's why they call them crushes. If they were easy, they'd call them something else. 16 Candles. So, I just find it so mind-blowing that John Hughes was able to write the script for this movie in the space of a weekend. It was just absolutely crazy for me if, you ever, if anyone's ever tried to put pen to paper and write in something like something as big as a movie script to do that and accomplish it in a weekend is just a massive 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 testament to john hughes i think i think he wrote this as well with molly ringwald in mind for the lead um but yeah it's it's just an okay movie i think it's very very dated it's very very 80s definitely but that's all part of the charm of this movie to me. I really, really enjoy it. Bit disappointed to see sort of John Cusack in this movie because I'm a big John Cusack fan. But this is a very, very early role for him. Very much the infancy of his career. So he doesn't really have a lot to do in this movie. He's kind of just there. Anthony Michael Hall, I just want to punch in the face in this movie. He is so annoying. Cannot stand him. Really, really anchors the movie's enjoyability down for me. But I enjoy Molly Ringwald in this movie. It's sort of her birthday. Everyone kind of forgets it. They're all sort of got things going on in their own life. And yeah, it kind of sucks for her that everyone's just not giving her the attention on her 16th birthday. And obviously she's after this guy. She's got this major crush on this guy at school. And it's just a, it's, it's a fun movie. It's okay. Again, similar to Weird Science, I find my enjoyment just hard to get over that finish line with it. Every time I rewatch it again, it's just, yeah, I like it, I like it, it's fine, it's fine, but I don't love this movie. It's a good film, I enjoy it, so, yeah, it is what it is, it's just, there's more movies on this list that I prefer. So coming in at number six, we have 16 Candles. So coming in at number five, we have... Now, however much you love me, that's how hard you hit me. Okay. I love you a lot. Well, then, the harder you hit me, the more I know you love me. Okay. That a girl. All right. Kelly <laughs> Sue. So, yeah, this was the last John Hughes movie that I was I was after because this was the last movie he directed before he just sort of stuck to writing movies. And, yeah, this is very, very much the turning point for me. Came out in the very, very early 90s. And John Hughes, I think, kind of just lost that magic, unfortunately, when it came to writing scripts. He was doing movies like Baby's Day Out and Home Alone 3, Flubber. Not the best movies, in my opinion. But, yeah, this was kind of the start of that. It was. It, it definitely has the John Hughes magic. It, has, it feels very much like a Home Alone. It does have those kind of tones to the movie. But, yeah, this was the, the, the start of the downfall, unfortunately. 
in my opinion. The, the quality just wasn't there. This again, I still really enjoy this movie. There's parts in it I like. I think um, James Belushi in this film is just yeah, he has great great chemistry with the actress playing Kaylee Sue in this film as the sort of this father and daughter sort of con team. But yeah, they 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 have great on they're great on screen together. It's it's a fun film. It's heartfelt towards the ending, and I think that's what kind of won me over about it. I do still enjoy it, but again, it's not John Hughes's finest hour. So yeah, coming in at number five for me, we have Kelly Sue. So coming in at number four, we have. What did you, what did you have? A few drinks this morning, <laughs> huh? I, I think you did, didn't you? Oh, what are you, Mother Cabrini? You never touch this stuff? No, 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 but I, I I wouldn't be drinking if I was going to entertain some kids. Hey, I don't have to take any shit from you. You know who I am? In the field of local live home entertainment. Oh, my God! Get in your mouse and get out of here. Hey, you, uh, let me tell you something, you low-life lying, four-flushing sack of shit. <laughs> Uncle Buck. So, yeah, I think these next four movies for me are quintessential John Hughes. I absolutely adore all four of these films. I don't really have much negative to say about them. Um, but, yeah, Uncle Buck, very, very much a great John Candy vehicle. Absolutely superb. Really love when Hughes and Candy got together. So, yeah, he obviously plays Buck, this... <laughs> This guy whose his brother is his brother's wife, her father's had a heart attack and the parents have to go visit the father. Someone has to look after the kids. Who's available? Uncle Buck. And yeah, it's kind of like the, the the friction there between the eldest daughter and the uncle is just absolutely phenomenal. You can tell where the movie's going to go, but I just absolutely love the journey that we go on to get there. It's got some great one-liners in it. John Candy, again, has brings all that likability to the table that we just love from him. And it's just a really, really fun, enjoyable, heartwarming comfort movie. And it is just really, really fun. So coming in at fourth place for me, we have Uncle Buck. So coming in at number three, we have... Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So, yeah, this was not love at first sight for me with this film. I just really, really couldn't get into it. It's one of those movies where it just gets you on a bad night for me. It really, really did. It was just, I wasn't feeling it. I, I'd, I'd heard so many positive things about this movie, and I just really, really couldn't get into it when I first watched it. So it kind of went on the back burner for a long while before the next rewatch. Finally got to that rewatch, and... I was like, this is a really good film. Really, really enjoyed it. Matthew Broderick really wasn't sort of winning me over in the role. He just, I, he, 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 I just couldn't really picture him pulling off this kind of character. But it still worked nonetheless. I still enjoyed it. I thought the three leads in this movie are very, very entertaining. Very enjoyable to watch. The, the soundtrack of this movie is really, really fun. Really, really enjoy it. Just love that whole concept of Ferris Bueller's just taking the piss out of the school system. Absolutely just going on this day, having the best day that they possibly can have, and just really, really enjoying it. I'm quite surprised as well to see that a lot of people just hate or despise this movie, and I can't really sort of get on the same page with that, or even try and sort of understand it. I mean, I respect people's opinions and everything, but yeah, I just, I can't get on that wavelength. I can't even sort of really try and understand that wavelength. But yeah, each to their own. Unfortunately, I'm sorry pe those people just didn't get the enjoyment I got from this film. But 
yeah, I just I just really, really enjoyed it. I think Alan Rock as well is just absolutely phenomenal as Cameron in this movie. Just, yeah, superb. It has all the John Hughes-isms in it. Just absolutely great. Really, really enjoy this film from start to finish now. It's had a great time with it. And it's exceptional looking 4K as well. So if you haven't seen this movie on 4K and you do enjoy it, treat yourself because it's just uh, it's a stellar upgrade from the Blu-ray. So, yeah, that's number three for me. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <clears throat> so coming in at number two, we have... You're no saint. You got a free cab, you got a free room. And someone who'll listen to your boring stories. I mean, didn't you, didn't you notice on the plane when you started talking, eventually I started reading the vomit bag? Didn't that give you some sort of clue, like, hey, maybe this guy's not enjoying it? You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are that are funny or or mildly amusing or interesting. You're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. They're not even amusing accidentally. Honey, I'd, li I'd like you to meet Del Griffith. He's got some amusing anecdotes for you. Oh, and here's a gun so you can blow your brains out. You'll thank me for it. <sighs> I, I, I could tolerate any any insurance seminar. For days, I could sit there and listen to them go on and on with a big smile on my face. And I'd say, how can you stand it? And I'd say, because I've been with Del Griffith. I can take anything. You know what that'd say? That'd say, I know what you mean. The shower curtain ring guy. Whoa. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, yeah, I was very, very late to the game with this film. I think I caught half of it when it was on E4, one of the channels over here in the UK, and I really liked what I saw. So I decided, you know what, I'll get the movie on Blu-ray, I'll watch it from start to finish, and just what a treat it was. Ve again, why did I put this movie off for so long? Absolute blast with it. Again, John Candy, similar to Uncle Buck, brings all that John Candy joy that we just absolutely love from him in this film. Steve Martin... This very much sort of uptight, sort of upper class worker, shall we say. And all he wants to do is get home for the holidays. Everything's just going wrong for him. From trying to get the taxi, to getting on the plane, the, um, losing his first class place. And yeah, everything goes wrong. And he ends up getting stuck with Dell, John Candy. Two polar opposites, very much the odd couple. And they just kind of have to learn to deal to get along with each other and it's just such a heartwarming movie absolutely love it again john hughes's dialogue absolutely kills it in this film absolutely superb really really fun movie great music in it as well such a heartwarming ending really really tugs at the heartstrings as well and it just absolutely works again from start to finish for me so coming in at number two we have planes trains and automobiles so coming in at number one for me, we have... But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain. And an athlete. And a basket case. A princess. And a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't, 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 don't. The Breakfast Club. So, yeah, this for me is lightning hitting the right place at the right time. I think with this film, again, this was my favourite film for a very, very long time. It really was. And then I just decided, you know what, I can't really have a favourite film because there's just so many that I enjoy. But this one was right up there for me. A superb stellar cast in this movie. Sort of the best Brat Pack movie, in my opinion, of all these, you know, these hot young actors in America at the time. John Hughes' writing is very much the star of this show. For me, he just absolutely kills it. These five stereotypical students forced to spend the Saturday detention together. And as the movie goes on, the, the walls of the stereotype break down for each and every one of these characters. And we discover that they're all the same. It's so well written. It's just a fantastic, fantastic movie for me. Again, the soundtrack absolutely kills it. I absolutely love that song, Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. It is synonymous with this movie. And, yeah, 
it's just a great great film it's not one of these big budget hollywood movies that it all takes place in a very sort of confined you know area and situation it's all in one room i just absolutely love it it's dialogue driven really really love that it's just absolutely fantastic 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 movie for me yeah just superb really really enjoy it that the classroom uh, well the, the scene where everyone's just sort of sitting around and be, pouring their souls out to one another just yeah absolutely fantastic fantastic performances from everyone involved yeah it's just a small movie and it does so much i just absolutely adore this film i just think it's fantastic so coming in at number one for me we have the absolutely brilliant the breakfast club so yeah those are my rankings of the john hughes directed movies i have an absolute blast particularly with the last four movies on this list and yeah just real real fun time so that being said guys gonna leave the video there and say thanks very much for watching stay safe and i'll see you in the next one bye for now